If you are pregnant or you've recently had a baby, this podcast is for you. I am your host, Kath Bequee, a physiotherapist working in women's health and mum of three. Inside my online program, Fitness Mama, I just love helping support women to care for their bodies during pregnancy, prepare their bodies for birth and support their after birth recovery, helping them feel confident and strong inside out during this important stage of their lives. In this podcast, join me each week as we dive into all things pregnancy care, childbirth and postnatal recovery, helping you through every step of the journey. It is absolutely possible to feel amazing and confident in our bodies during this motherhood journey, and I want that for you. Come and say hi to me on Instagram at fitnessmama, and let's dive into today's episode. Hey, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Fitness Mama podcast. This episode is a solo episode and I'm going to give you some really chunky information in a short space of time and it's perfect for you if you're pregnant or in those first six weeks postpartum or perhaps you're quite far down the track or you're not pregnant but you're planning on another pregnancy. So let's discuss how long should I rest after giving birth and this is actually quite a common question according to Google searches. A lot of you are asking Google this. So I wasn't very happy with the responses. They're all very cookie cutter and they're all saying just six weeks. And I was like, what does that even mean? How do you rest for six weeks and what is rest? So let's quickly dive into this episode. I trust you'll find it really valuable and practical as well. Quick reminder, if you do enjoy this fitness mama podcast. If you do find it helpful, it really is amazing if you could give it a quick rating and review and share it with your friends who might be pregnant too or recently had a baby. This is the way that the podcast gets found by more women and it's a way that we can help more women with this podcast. So I really do appreciate all the ratings and reviews. Feel free to leave your name on the review, podcast review, and I'm happy to give you a shout out too. Right, let's quickly dive into this topic. How long should I rest for after giving birth? So quickly, I want to just say, this is all pretty, you'll all know this, but what one person's idea of rest is, is might be completely different from another person's idea of rest. So some of you might be having your first baby and sleep deprived, whereas Another person might be having their fourth baby and home by themselves with four kids running around the house. So everyone's at different stages. So I do just want to say the definition of rest is a very grey area. I'm going to try to break it down into three main aspects. We're going to be talking about walking guidelines, horizontal rest, so lying down guidelines, and also going to talk about some practical things around the home like household chores and that sort of thing. Now, as I mentioned, there are some complicating factors because everyone's definition of rest is different, but also medical complications. Everyone's birth experience was different, whether or not you've had a cesarean or a vaginal birth. Complications, stitches, like the the list goes on. So do take note of that and please be guided by your healthcare professional or healthcare team for any specific guidelines related to your specific situation. And the other thing to consider is how much support do you have? Are you a single mum versus you've got a lot of family and friends around to help her out? So with all that being said, and I do want you to listen to what I have to say with a grain of salt, because what I'm saying is they are general guidelines only, and I just want you to view it at that. I don't want you to say, think what I say is gospel because, as I just said, everyone is different. So pick and choose what works for you. Now, let's dive in. So three elements of rest I said I'd cover, walking, lying down, and household chores. So First of all, giving birth is a big deal. So no matter if you've had a vaginal or a cesarean birth, your body has been through a lot. So how long can I walk for? 
Let's think about our pelvic floor and core as our weakest link after giving birth. You might have been quite active in your pregnancy. You might have been quite fit. But if you've just given birth and you've had a vaginal birth, everything's stretched. Your pelvic floor is stretched up to 300%. Like it's perfectly built for the job of having a baby, but it has stretched and it's like an elastic band. We want that natural recoil to occur as much as possible. So by taking, like when we're sitting, when we're standing, when we're walking, our pelvic floor muscles are under the load of gravity. And that's why I think bursts of horizontal rest throughout the day can be really important. And I'll talk about that in a little bit, but let's first talk about how long can I walk for? So general guidelines, and I love these guidelines, and I didn't follow these guidelines with the birth of my baby. And as a result, two weeks postpartum, I'd had no issues in my pelvic floor, but I went for a walk, I went to the cafe, and by the time I got home, it was a few hours later, and I had symptoms of prolapse. And it really just demonstrates, you know, as I said, the pelvic floor, it's like an elastic band that's sitting at the base of our pelvis. And if we're keeping it on stretch with the load of gravity, everything is under, everything's under tension, under load. And we want that natural recoil to occur. So that's why I recommend first week postpartum, let's go for bursts of five-minute walks. Second week postpartum, walking for 10-minute bursts. Third week postpartum, 15. Fourth week, four weeks postpartum, 20-minute walks. You get the gist. Five weeks postpartum, 25-minute walks. And by the time we're up to six weeks postpartum, that's 30-minute walks. So every week we're going up by five minutes. Okay, I know what you might be thinking. You might think, oh, what? Only 10 minutes of walking in week two? That's ridiculous. So as I said, I do just want to say this doesn't have to be 10 minutes for the whole day. You might go for 10 minutes in the morning. Then you might come home, have a rest, put your feet up. 10 minutes at lunchtime, 10 minutes in the afternoon, rather than doing 30 minutes all at once. So trying to break up your walking, your daily walking into blocks, and then this can help allow your pelvic floor and core to rest, relax, and recoil, like that elastic band that I just talked about. So I hope that makes sense, because I do feel there's very little in terms of warning signs. So you might be feeling great, And then just suddenly you walk another 10 metres and you're suddenly not feeling great and you might have pelvic floor symptoms. There's no grey area. You either feel great or you don't feel great. And this is where I want you, if you're listening today, to feel great. So I am very much of the, you know, after having three babies myself and having helped hundreds of women inside Fitness Mama and in face-to-face helping them recover after birth, I and very much of the opinion that these first six weeks postpartum, the more rest you can do, the better it helps your recovery. You've got the rest of your life to get fit and strong again, but these first six weeks, the best thing you can be doing for your body is just building things up gradually and slowly and resting. (laughs) So let's talk about a second component of rest. And it really ties in with that walking, that the first, what I just talked about. So how much lying down should we be doing? So as I said, first six weeks, bursts of horizontal rest, amazing to help with that recoil of the elastic band that's stretched, those pelvic floor muscles, but also horizontal rest can help to reduce pain, discomfort, swelling around your abdominals and pelvic floor area. And as I mentioned before, it takes the weight of gravity off those muscles. So what does this look like in real life? So if you have a toddler, you could try reading a book instead of sitting. You might lie down with them on the couch before the crazy hour kicks in at 4 p.m. Or next time that you're on the phone, instead of standing or sitting again, try lying down for a few minutes. And I think if we can just try to tie in those short little bursts of lying down throughout the day, it can really help with our energy levels and also how we are feeling physically. Okay, so then let's go on to the third component, household chores. 
Yeah, household chores. It's a tricky one, right? And again, some of you might have be at your first baby and you've got lots of family supports close by, whereas others might be home alone with four kids. So everyone, it's it's tricky and this really does depend on support around the home. But as, as I, th- I know, I've had a chat to a lot of guest speakers and postpartum doulas, everyone is all, we're all saying, let the house go, you know, forget about that vacuum that needs to be done or a load of washing, it can wait. So if at all possible, let's reduce the household tasks where we're able, delegate them to family members when, where we're able. But whatever you do or don't do, there are a couple of golden rules that I call them. So try not to lift anything heavier than your baby is number one. So think all the wet laundry baskets, heavy vacuums and that sort of thing. Again, I look, I totally understand some of you might have no other choice, but if you've got a wet laundry basket, instead of taking it out in one go, you might do two or three trips from the laundry to the back garden so that you're reducing the quantity, like the heaviness of the load. Does that make sense, ladies? Be guided by your healthcare team as well and how your body is feeling. So we talked about walking guidelines We've talked about lying down and we've talked about household chores. One final thing is getting started, and I know this isn't, like this podcast episode is about rest, but (laughs) it would be amiss of me to not talk about some sort of rehab and core connect exercises. So those first six weeks, if you can start with your pelvic floor exercises and some gentle core connect, because if we get this muscle group, these muscle groups working gently and slowly and carefully, this can help support your body so that when you lift something heavy, you're not going to get back pain or you know, it can help to protect your body against future injuries and also help your body feel better. So inside Fitness Mama, I do offer a really gentle core connect exercises that are safe to do in these first six weeks postpartum, because I think it's also not about rest, 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 because we don't want to decondition the body. It's a really fine balance. And if you would like support with this, come and join our seven day free trial inside Fitness Mama. I'll walk you through those gentle core connect exercises that are safe from birth. And then once you've had that medical check from six weeks, you can join our regular workouts. And this is all provided you haven't had any medical complications. All right, that's it, ladies. As I said, short and sweet, but hopefully gave you some better guidelines than what you'd get if you just read Google, which pretty much all the responses were rest for six weeks and then get started. And that's precisely what as I was talking about, it's all well and good to say rest, rest, rest. And then we go to our six week medical appointment. And usually the doctor looks you over and says, yeah, you're right to go. Get back into running, get back into exercise. We will see you, you know, never. (laughs) We'll see you at your next pregnancy. Whereas this notion of postnatal rehab, this gradual increase in our activity levels, in our strength levels, in our pelvic floor and core, just like if you'd had a sporting injury on the footy field and you'd had to have surgery, you would probably have quite a strict rehab protocol. This is something I believe all women need after having birth. So do come and check out Fitness Mama. Even if it's just the seven-day free trial, you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. And I really think this is the sort of stuff that all women need after having a baby. That's it, ladies. Come and say hi to me on Instagram at Fitness Mama. Don't forget to give a rating review and review on Apple Podcasts if you love this podcast. Otherwise, have a fantastic day and I will see you next week for another episode of the Fitness Mama podcast. Thanks for listening to the Fitness Mama podcast brought to you by the Fitness Mama freebies found at www.fitnessmama.com forward slash free. So please take a few seconds to leave a review, subscribe so you don't miss an episode and be sure to take a screenshot of this podcast, upload it to your social media and tag me at Fitness Mama so I can give you a shout out too. Until next time, remember an active pregnancy, confident childbirth and strong postnatal recovery is something that you deserve. 
Remember our disclaimer, materials and contents in this podcast are intended as general information only and shouldn't substitute any medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. I'll see you soon.